Hey there, and thanks for watching another one of my product reviews. Today I'm going to be talking about um, the Leatherman Rebar. The Leatherman Rebar is a medium duty, medium sized multi-tool made by Leatherman of America. It's um, part of the classic family of Leathermen. Uh, the classic family includes the larger super tool and the much smaller micro. I noticed in the classic family uh, they don't have a pocket sized uh, one which uh, Leatherman breaks their products up into uh, categories so um, then you've got your keychain, you've got your pocket size, you've got your full size which is what uh, the rebar is and then you've got your heavy duty so they're just missing a pocket size so you'll see what I mean when, I'll just get rid of the sheath, I'll talk about that later um, you'll see what I mean when I line it up with its uh, family. So that is the Leatherman Micro and that is the Leatherman Super Tool 300. And it's funny, the Super Tool 300, when you look at it like that, doesn't look a whole lot bigger. But when you look at it like that, I think it's, um, its size increase starts to show. And it really is a far bigger multi-tool and um, yeah, far more capable for heavy duty stuff. Leatherman Micro, on the other hand, is um, familiar in you know appearance only, really, because it's not even got pliers as its main tool. It's a pair of scissors. I've got another review on the Micro um, from my webcam, uh, which, although it's not too flash, shows you lots of features. Same with the Super Tool. There's a review on that on my channel as well. So it's got essentially the same kit as the Super Tool, but somewhat scaled down versions. Get rid of the Micro. Um, although I won't make this a direct comparison video, I'll, I'll draw the obvious um, differences between the two uh, as they occur to me. All right. Uh, the Leatherman Rebar is my favourite Leatherman. It's not as um, it's not as tactical and efficient as the Wave series, and it's not as stocky as the as the Super Tool, and it's not as um, you know unique as the one-handed tools or as flash-looking as the Juices. It doesn't have as many tools, but something about it, I just think it's um, Jesus is a silly uh, coin of a uh, phrase to coin, but it's like a gentleman's multi-tool. I think it looks nice. It's got um, hasn't got any outside tools, so it's definitely a um, you operate it at a slower pace than you would say a wave. Uh, all the tools are accessible only from the inside. Um, it's my favourite multi-tool because it ticks a lot of boxes. It's really practical. Um, although it doesn't have scissors, which um, everyone seems to bemoan, so it's quite practical. It's um, medium sized, so it's a lot lighter than a wave. Um, it's only about six ounce, six and a half ounces or something, um, and the wave is about eight and a half ounces uh, for the essentially the same tool set. And it's got more capable screwdrivers. It just doesn't have the scissors, and also its price. Um, this is only about five to ten dollars more than. Uh, what Leatherman sort of are selling is their entry level models, the wingman and the sidekick and there's no comparison in quality although the wingman and the sidekick aren't, aren't horrible they've, they're not as well put together as, as this is. You look at this it's just the metals folded precisely and the um, everything is, has a simple elegance to it and when you open it up the plier head it's got, A it has the, new, the great new wire cutting jaws which um, anvil on each other as well, which I think that they all should. So if I focus on that. So they cross over. The wingman and sidekick, um, wingman and sidekick wire cutters just touch, so they sort of snip it. And um, hasn't really done the job on some wire that I've tried to cut with them. So, um, yeah, so fit and finish is great as well. Okay, enough rambling. I'll go through the tools um, and list their pros and cons. The uh, needle nose portion of the pliers are great. The uh, the bolt twisting sections of pliers are standard or perhaps a bit below average even because they're very small. You don't really get much grip on there. Um, so if you're grabbing a nut you're going to be grabbing it from a wide open um, wide open sort of angle. Because um, yeah, you I can count what five bits of nailing there um, whereas you compare it to the super tool and I know the super tool is bigger, but the super tool goes almost around in a f almost completes its ellipsis there. Um, it's got about eight or nine teeth there, um, so it's a bit less, a bit less capable of that. 
The cutters, however, are excellent. Um, the cutters will cut this. I've got a quite heavy gauge wire just here. Um, this is quite thick, um, quite thick fencing wire I was using um, today, so they shouldn't have any problems cutting this. I'll use the, um, well, you know, I'll use the normal wire cutting part first. That does it like that. There you go. There's a bit of a bit stuck there. I was just um, so it snipped that quite well, and that's you, for this sort of wire. You, you should be using the hard wire cutters, which which do it a lot easier. But it's a testament to the 154 cm that that didn't mark or or scathe these in any way. Very good cutters. Uh, I've got to keep it open because that's where all the tools are. First handle tool, serrated knife. It's a uh, same almost identical version of the super tools. It's a serrated knife that will cut fabric um, and cloth and things very easily. The serrations are hard to sharpen. That's all I have to say about that. The can opener and wire stripper, again, identical to the Wave uh, Super Tools. It's Leatherman's can opener. It opens cans, and that's really quite sharp in there, and that'll strip your wires. All these tools are locking, by the way, using this back bar. I've got a groove in the tool there that the back bar slips into. Really simple and ingenious way of um, putting it together. They have see, so you see, that's the back spring there, and that's that's constantly pushing it outwards against this lock. So that single spring, that bit of metal is taut enough to force this lock down. At any rate, a nice full size Phillips, and this is where it trumps the wave. My most used multi tool tools are the screwdrivers and the pliers, and this has better versions of both than the Leatherman Wave, which is probably its nearest competitor. And far better than the Leatherman Wingman or Sidekick. And then we've got, and this is the saw. And the tools clump in this as well, and I don't care about clumping, but some people do, it bothers some people. So this saw, it's got the same aggressive teeth, um, it's made properly, it's narrow at the teeth, and it's wider at the teeth, sorry, and narrow at the spine, so it has less friction on the wood. Um, other multi-tool makers don't put that much thought into their saws and just think if you put a crisscross pattern on the bottom of a piece of metal, it's a saw. It's not the case. Other side is your standard fixed blade knife, that's again, almost identical to the super tool 300s just smaller so you see the two blades there yeah you get about a you get a couple of centimeters on the super tools blade so what's super tools blade is about seven and three quarters centimeters and um, that's about six so yeah a couple of a couple of centimeters more of cutting but I don't really use the knives on my Leathermans. I usually have a, um, well, I use a knife on a Leatherman called the Skeletal, which is my EDC knife. Let's put the super tool mate away there. Right here. The next tool will be the, where are we? Sure, the next tool is the assortment of uh, flat and flathead screwdrivers. So you've got the uh, large flathead which is the about the equivalent of the Leatherman Super Tools medium flathead. And then you've got the um, and the smaller narrow flathead, and they're all precision machines, so they've got a proper squared off head with defined corners, so they'll get into your screws really well. And then you've got this awl, and the awl is a bit of a letdown if you're used to the Super Tools awl. For a start, you'll notice something like that because it's not particularly sharp. And if I turn this around you notice it's just a plain piece of metal with a bit of a blade on the side whereas a proper awl, which is what the super tool 300 has if you see here, see it's got that groove cut out so it's got a bit of a channel to carve carve the wood with and that's what an awl should have this will punch through things fine but when you compare the two it needs that channel so there you go However, to be brutally honest, I haven't used the awl, it's just something I like to have. And then, with the awl put away, we'll be looking at the file. And the file, um, I would have liked, I think this is such a common sentiment as well, I would have preferred a diamond file rather than the mill and bastard um, files. You could you, you can use that for precision, uh, you know, semi-precision filing, but it's... Um, yeah, the diamond files are great for bringing your knives back to life. Um, and this bottom part, it's yeah, it's a rough sort of a rough hacksaw. Geez, it's 
kind of roughly machined actually, but unless it's supposed to go around like that. I don't know. If there is if hacks if little hacksaws are supposed to wave like that, let me know in the comments, I'm curious. And a lanyard hole, but I don't use lanyards on these things, that's what sheaths are for. If you're carrying this in your pocket, you must have big pockets, because it's definitely not a pocket size multi-tool, I don't think. It's definitely a sheath, a light sheath multi-tool. Speaking of which, this is a sheath that it came with. It's a very basic Leatherman nylon sheath. It has one pocket. It's been well used. It's not, not, so not showing any signs of failure. It doesn't have the bottom um, doesn't have the bottom hole for leaving the pliers in open. And it's got you can carry it scout style or on a, um, a security belt like a, a nylon belt. Um, does fit this, so that's something for you security guards or policemen out there. Um, so the sheath is okay, but um, the real star is the Leatherman rebar, which for about 49 to 59 Australian dollars, 59 in black oxide, um, you get a, a really classy multi-tool that is far better than the um, than the slightly cheaper options um, with their one-hand opening knives and saws and things, the Leatherman uh, wingman and sidekick. Uh, get this one first. Uh, the wingman and sidekick, they've got spring-loaded pliers, which hopefully start hitting more of the um, high-end Leatherman models, but until that happens, um, I'd leave them aside and go with this, or the Wave, which is great too. Thanks for watching.